Hey folks, this week on Science Alliance, I'll tell you why LEDs are not ready for prime time, and why you should stick with fluorescence, and why fuchsia is the new black, and why you should always wear socks with sandals, and why you should always wear white after Labor Day. are better than monkeys and right uh, where was I right so welcome to this week's science alliance uh, briefly excuse the mess of the tank behind me it's in for a major overhaul but I'll talk more about that in another video now for those of you who are new to the science alliance series let me give you a brief overview of what science alliance is uh, so I'm only going to present one side of an issue but to see the other side and get a balanced view you'll need to go check out my counterpart in science alliance Cam uh, he'll be simultaneously posting a video presenting the opposing side uh, all the links will be in the description. And after you watch both sides, then you should have the information you need to make up your own mind. So remember, today my job is to convince you to use fluorescent lighting, not to provide you with a few, uh, excuse me, a full view of the lighting issue, maybe in a future video. And as always, if you guys have any topics you'd like to see us cover in the future, uh, leave us a comment below or uh, send us an email. And our email is also in the description below. Also, please, please take the poll that we set up. We always think it's pretty swell to see what you cool cats think. And to that point, we always have a really short poll associated with our Science Alliance videos. So put on your bifocals and go fill out the poll. Fill out the poll. These are not the droids you're looking for. All right, but here's the real benefit of doing the polls. In the last video, I asked you about uh, the kinds of filters that you guys run on your tanks. And to that question of, uh, what current fil or, excuse me, what filters are you currently running? 70% uh, said canisters, uh, about 60% said hang on the backs, and 10% said sponges. And that's because people have multiple tanks, multiple filters, etc. But you get the idea. And to the question of if you could only use one kind of filter, 64% uh, said canister, 10% said hang on the back, 5% said sponges, and almost 20% said sumps. So it looks like more of you wish you could be using sumps, and quite a few of you want to ditch your sponges. Now, let's quit stalling and uh, start talking about some light. All right, so let's start this debate with a little thought experiment. Think for a minute. What, when you aquascape, you know, uh, sure you've got some inspiration in mind uh, from nature, from a garden, some other concept, but whose tanks do you actually think about? Now, there are many great aquascapers out there, but a couple very well-known ones will we'll go to Takashi Amano and Tom Barr and ask yourself, what lights are they using on their tanks? Now, I can pretty much guarantee, if you know anything about those folks, uh, you did not say LEDs. You think that these masters would stay away from LEDs if they were superior to our other options out there? Now, uh, let's see if we can do a little bit better than that. First off, I'm going to look at some high quality options, but yes, I know there are cheaper lighting options out there, so don't get too caught up on the math. Now, LEDs are expensive to get, caught, uh, to get up and running. For example, if I wanted a high quality LED uh, fixture for my tank, um, I went to build my LED just to get uh, an idea of the cost and to get the coverage I'd want on my tank I'd end up having to spend between 300 to 500 or, or cheaper if I was suspending the lights from my ceiling which is a little bit difficult for me here uh, throw in a dimmer and I could be up over 600 bucks that and it would use about 96 watts of electricity now based on my electricity rates it would cost me about 8 cents per day um, or about $29 per month or excuse me per year to run but I could also buy a high quality T5HO fixture uh, with a dimmer built in, and that would run me about $489. But of course I would need to add bulbs, and those will cost me about 10 to 20 bucks a pop, so that brings the total price to maybe up a little under $550. So depending on the setup with the LEDs, we're close. Maybe the T5s come out ahead. Again, this is all sort of, you know, up in the air. But let's run the electrical cost. The T5HOs, uh, 13 cents per day, and about $47 per year. So that means the LEDs would save me about $18 per year to run. But remember, depending on your setup, uh, you may have spent more for the LEDs. So depending on the differential, it could take you a few years to come out ahead on the LEDs. But we're not done yet. What about replacing bulbs on T5s? You gotta replace them every year, right? Now that's a myth. That's right, you don't need to replace them every year. But myth, great marketing, whatever, it's been confirmed numerous times now. Even if there's a very slight drop in par, it's not that big a deal for a planted tank. But more interestingly, for folks who've actually measured the drop in par on their bulbs, I've seen as little as 5-7% to drop over a two-year period. That's hardly anything. But 
this might even just be related to some splash on your bulbs or reflectors, which so could be even less than that. But the running cost uh, and the bulb replacement. Now, true, if you keep these pictures for four to five years, maybe the LEDs come out cheaper. But wait, remember the T5HO had a dimming feature? We only calculated running the bulbs at full blast. What if we actually use the dimming feature? So let's say you ramp up at the beginning of the day and ramp down at the end of the day to simulate sunrise and sunset. Uh, and then maybe you only have two bulbs on for those early and late periods. Well, this is exactly what Tom Barr did on one of his tanks and measured the actual uh, energy usage and calculated the cost. And he found that he could save 20% on energy using the T5s in that way compared to LEDs. Just some food for thought. Another important consideration in the T5 versus uh, LED debate is the cost savings for LEDs uh, can quickly get wiped out if you have to replace or repair your LEDs. Now with the T5 fixture, you can fix pretty much any of it with just off-the-shelf parts. And remember that graph showing chlorophyll A and B in my last video? Uh, now, as I mentioned, it was an oversimplification, but it illustrates a point. Most LEDs out there are only peaking in one specific spot on the light spectrum, and plants produce far more than just two pigments. So LED makers are targeting these specific peaks. That's really just a bit of guesswork. We don't really know, you know, quote unquote, what the best spectrum to target is. So when you run T5s, you can get a broader spectrum. Now, especially if you're running multiple different kinds of bulbs. But let me take a step backwards. As much as we want to talk about costs, energy efficiency, and replicating nature, come on, folks, let's be honest. This is a hobby. We're not in it to save money. We're in it to spend money and keep the fish and plants we enjoy along the way. To that end, T5 still offer tremendous flexibility since you can change out bulbs and get better spectrum spread or just make your tank look better. And again, let's be honest here, especially when it comes to our show tanks that are in our living rooms, we want them to look good. Now, another major drawback for LEDs is they need cooling to operate. And when we start talking about big aquariums especially, it's just not feasible. And as an aside, go and look at what Amano is using to light up some of his big setups, not LEDs. What about light spread? Now, most LED lenses are pretty narrow, though some get up to about 90 degree beam, uh, degree beam angles now. Um, but with a quality T5 fixture, the spread of light will be, I mean, just so much more even compared to the directional nature of LEDs. And the colors? I mean, with the T5s, they're just beautiful, especially when you're talking about enhancing your red plants. Before I end this video, let me say one thing. I think LEDs are the future. The technology is there, but the prices are still higher than they need to be, and the manufacturers have really not caught up with the current generations of LEDs. Um, the current generations are better for things like deeper water penetration and all kinds of other spectrum issues. Today, I think that you can win with either T5HOs or LEDs. Bigger tanks, I think the T5s win. And smaller tanks, I think the LED win. But what about all of our tanks in between? Well, go and watch what Cam has to say, and then you decide. Now remember, send us an email if you have topics you want us to cover, and please vote in the poll. It takes just about 10 seconds. Now hit that like button if you want to see more Science Alliance videos. We're always open to suggestions. And if you hated this one, hit the dislike button. But even better, leave me a comment uh, with your rage letting me know what I could do better in the next one. And if you want to stay up to date with my channel, including the Science Alliance series, uh, make sure you subscribe to me, but also to Cam. So we'll see you in the next one, and remember, the future's so bright, I got to wear shades.